Hi, Miss Venable here, bringing you a Screencastify on the beautiful polyatomic ions. It's likely that your chemistry teacher will ask you to memorize a chart of polyatomic ions, at least enough to kind of recognize those ions when you see them in chemical formulas and I actually have my students just kind of flat out memorize them but I'm going to teach you guys in the screencastify a couple of little tricks you don't actually have to memorize all of them you just need to know these little tricks okay so the first thing I want you to notice is that this trick isn't going to work for everything okay it only works for the ones that have an oxygen in them so it'll be one other element and then it'll have oxygen bonded onto it but there are a lot of those so this is a really useful trick like um the very second one here bromate has a bromine and then it's bonded with oxygen so this trick i'm going to teach you works for all of those that have one element and then it's bonded to oxygen so that's going to be things like chlorate, chlorite, hypochlorite, iodate, permanganate, nitrate, nitrite. Doesn't work for hydroxide because um, the oxygen has to come second. Um, I'll also teach you a variation for things that start with hydrogen, like hydrogen carbonate, hydrogen sulfate. It won't work for thiocyanate uh, there. You just have to flat out memorize that one. Carbonate it works for. Uh, dichromate it works for. Chromate it works for. Sulfate. Um, it will work for sulfite and phosphate it will work for. So those ones that have one element with oxygen, and those are called the oxyanions, and there's a ton of them. So this is a great little trick. Okay, notice that some of them end in eight, and some of them end in it, and some of them have the prefix per. And so what does all of that mean? Well, basically, if you just know how to write the eights, you can figure out the ites and the pers and all that. So um, my trick that I first teach is just memorize the eights. So phosphate, carbonate, sulfate, and so on. Just memorize the eights. So the way I teach my students to memorize the eights, the big ones are nitrogen, and that would be nitrate. Carbon would make carbonate. Uh, chlorine would make chlorate. Sulfur would make sulfate, and phosphorus would make phosphate. So depending on what atom is bonded with the oxygen, this little trick will help you figure out how to write those chemical formulas. You're sitting there on your test, you're like, oh, I just can't remember how to write the chemical formula for that polyatomic ion. I know it's an eight, and I know there's a trick to remember them. Well, here's the trick. So the mnemonic device you're going to use is Nick the Camel, eight, because they all end in eight, a clam supper in Phoenix. Okay, what does that mean? Well, N is Nick, and that's nitrogen. C is camel, and that's carbon. Eight is, of course, eight, because they all end in eight. Clam is chlorine, CL, chlorine. S is sulfur, so that would be like sulfate. Uh, P is phosphorus, and so all of these are going to be bonded with oxygen, and we're going to, we're going to, work out the mnemonic device to know how many oxygens get bonded and what's the charge. So it's always going to be whatever element bonded with oxygen, some number of oxygens written as a subscript, and then the charge of the ion at the top. So if you have um, nitrogen bonded with your oxygen, the N means a nitrogen. So I would write N and then an O. And to know how many oxygens, so to know what subscript to tell us how many oxygens have bonded with nitrogen, we're going to count the consonants in the word Nick. We're going to leave out the I, that's a vowel. So N, C, and K. And I have three consonants in that name, Nick. And so the subscript for the oxygen is a three. So there's a nitrogen bonded to three oxygens. Okay, if we want to know the charge, and by the way, these are all oxy acid, oxy anions, right? So they're all anions, they're all negative. And anions means negative. So it'll always be negative, but negative what? Negative one, negative two, negative three. So if we want to know the charge to put with a negative sign on top as a superscript, we count the vowels. So the word Nick only has an I, that's a one, one vowel. So the charge for nitrate would be N, because Nick is nitrogen, O, because they're always bonded with oxygens, 
three because it has three consonants in the name Nick, and negative because they're always negative, and then a negative one because there's one vowel in Nick. All right, I hope that made sense. We're going to repeat that for carbonate. So camel is carbon, right? C is carbon, camel, and that's going to make carbonate. It's got three consonants, the C, the M, and the L. So they're going to be a subscript three with the oxygen. And it's got two vowels, the A and the E, so the charge will be a two minus. Chlorate is the clam, clam supper chlorate, because CL is the chemical symbol for chlorine. So we're going to have three consonants, right, the C, the L, and the M. And we're going to have one vowel, that's the A. So the chemical formula would be CL bonded with three oxygens and a charge of one minus. Isn't this a neat trick? And you can do the same thing for the sulfur. It would make sulfate because they always innate. And that would have four consonants and two vowels. So SO4 with a two minus charge. And then Phoenix would be phosphate. So that would be four consonants and three vowels. So the chemical formula would be PO4 with a three minus charge. Pretty neat little trick. Okay, so notice not all of these end in eight, but a lot of them do bromate, chlorate, iodate, nitrate, carbonate, sulfate. So you don't have to really remember all of those. I guess you'd have to remember iodate. Um, <laughs> iodate is IO3 with a one minus charge. I got to think of a, something to add onto our mnemonic device to get that one in there. But that, that will help you kind of remember the nitrogen, the nitrate, the carbonate, the chlorate, the sulfate, and the phosphate. And those are ones that we use all the time. So any that don't end in eight, um, we need to talk about those a little bit more. So if you can remember the eight, the chemical formula for the eight, it's very easy to remember the ites. Like carbonate, if you know that formula, it's really easy to write the chemical formula for carbonite, okay? Because the ites just have one less oxygen. So remember back here, we did the phosphate. Phosphate was PO4 because there were four consonants, but phosphite would be PO3. Now the charge doesn't change for the ites. It'll be the same charge, okay? Um, if they add a prefix and a suffix, that does something too. So let's say the prefix is hypo and the ending is ite, the suffix is ite. Well, that's going to have two less oxygens than the original eight. So let's look again. So how would I write a hypophosphate? Well, it would have two less oxygens. So instead of being PO4 with a three minus charge, it would be PO2 with a three minus charge. And the name of it wouldn't be phosphate. It would be hypophosphite. Pretty neat little trick. Okay. If it's got extra oxygens, Okay, that's a little trick too. So if it's extra oxygens, you take the eight, whatever the name of the eight, and you add the prefix per, and you keep the ending eight. So if we had um, one extra oxygen, if this was PO5 here, then we would add the prefix per. So perphosphate would be the name of that. It'd be one word, perphosphate. Pretty neat. Okay, some of these are an eight, but they just have an attached hydrogen. Like this one right here, hydrogen carbonate. Oops, hydrogen carbonate. That's just the carbonate ion, and then they've added on this extra hydrogen on the front here, HCO3. So let's talk about that. Well, if you attach a hydrogen onto the front, um, that does sometimes change the name of it. Sometimes they'll call it a bi, like bicarbonate is an old-timey way to say hydrogen carbonate. So that's kind of an older naming system that we don't use anymore, but you do, you do see it sometimes, and I'm up on here sometimes, called bi dot dot dot, okay? You don't see that naming system as much as you used to. But if it has an attached hydrogen, then your polyatomic ion um, changes its charge a little bit. Now you just attach the word hydrogen to the name, like hydrogen carbonate, hydrogen sulfate, and your charge is actually going to increase by one. Now keep in mind it's a negative charge, like carbonate is a two minus charge, and so if it increases by one, then it becomes a one minus charge. 
So if you can kind of remember some of these little rules, um, it will really help you memorize the uh, polyatomic ions on your chart. And there are some that you just have to flat out memorize. I'm sorry about that. Um, they don't really follow any of the rules. Um, dichromate is one you're just going to have to flat out memorize. Um, thiocyanate, you just have to flat out memorize. Um, permanganate, there's no manganate on the list, so you just kind of have to memorize permanganate. Um, the chlorides follow the rules. Acetate, you just have to remember um, the formula for acetate. And there's two ways to write it. I usually write it C2H3O2. A lot of times you'll see it written out um, individually to show the order that things bond in. I call this chihuchu sometimes, <laughs> the chihuchu ion. Cyanide, you just have to memorize it. Now, ammonium, this very first one, it's not um, an oxy anion. It's actually a positively charged polyatomic ion. So it doesn't really follow these rules, and you just have to memorize. It's NH4 1 plus. So have fun memorizing those polyatomic ions. And remember, Nick the Camel ate a clam supper in Phoenix.